All right, in this video, I will teach you how to prove the limit when n go to infinity for these questions, like 1 plus 1 over n power of n is actually equals to e. Because based on our common sense, we will just assume when n is infinity, like 1 divide infinite, we actually get 0, isn't it? 1 plus 0, we actually get 1. 1 power of n, we should get 1, right? But e, we know, is not 1. It's something like 2.71825. So which is not really close to 1. So this is the reason why we want to prove is this one equals to e or equals to 1. All right, so let's prove it. So in order to prove it, I need to use the binomial expansion to expand this one, uh, which is something like uh, 1 plus 1 over n power of n. All right, if I want to prove this one, the first term is basically 1 power of n. But 1 power of n we know is actually is a 1. And then, all right, then the next term will be um, nc1. And then this one will be uh, 1 power of n power of 1 and then nc2, and then 1 power of n, power of 2, and then plus nc3, 1 power of n, power of 3, plus nc4, and then 1 power of n, power of 4, and so on. All right, later I will teach you what's the faster way to get the term at the back here. But right now we, we just kind of do until nc4, I think it's more than enough. All right, so right now I want to expand, just in case some students do not know how to expand. So the formula for, um, ncr is basically n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial this is the formula so if i randomly choose a term here so let's say i do something like uh, nc so nc3 example so this one is basically n factorial over n minus one uh, minus three factorial and then 3 factorial. So if I expand this one, I will need to expand something like n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 factorial. I will stop here, divided by n minus 3 factorial. And then 3 factorial is just 6. And then this one I cancel out. Then I will left like n, n minus 1, n minus 2, divided by 6. All right, so later I'm going to use these methods um, to straight away expand all of this term. Actually quite easy to remember. If you see nc3, right? Keep on start from n, multiply until the number before 3, which is 2. And then divide it by 3 factorial. All right, this is what we will do. So the first term is basically 1. So this one is nc1, and we all know it's n only. So this is 1 over n. All right, then this one is basically n, n minus 1, divided by 2 factorial. And then this is 1 over n that squared. We get n squared at the denominator. All right, then this one, we just prove it, which is n, n minus 1 n minus 2, all right, then divided by 3 factorial. This one actually give me n cubed at the denominator. Then the next term is keep on multiply until 3 in it because this is nc4. So nc2, I mean one, uh, n minus 2, n minus 3, then I close the bracket, divided by 4 factorial, and then n power 4, and so on. All right, so right now, um, I kind of need to solve all these numbers, but I'm not going to solve every single term, but I will solve some of it. So this is one, this is this one is another one. Alright, so from here, oh if I exp if I cancel out the n and n, I basically I get something like um n over 2n, isn't it? Plus if I expand them into two different fractions, this one should be n over 2n minus 1 over 2n. Alright, so over here for me, this one is important. This one is not important. Why? Because this one divided by n. Well, later, I need to sub n equals to infinite into here. We know any number divided by infinite we will get 0. So later, this one I will just cancel out. It will just become a 0. So I don't care the denominator is n, n squared, n cubed, or whatsoever. Whenever I see n at the bottom, I know this one is basically uh, will become 0 later. Okay, so this one why I say is important because this one after I simplify n and n, I get 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is a constant value. We need this constant value to prove it's actually equals to e. All right, so therefore example this term, the second one, I cancel n square. So this one, if I expand it, I will get something like n square minus 3n plus 2. All right, so if I uh, break them, I separate them into the three different fraction, then the first one is basically I will plus, this one, the first term is basically n square over 3 factorial is 6, all right? So it's 6n square. So this term is important. And then another two term, actually, I don't need to write also can one. Another two more term is negative 3n over 6n square and then plus 2 over 6n square. All right, you can see, 
This one, after I simplify, I still have n at the denominator, so later it will become 0. Okay. So this one, definitely we see an n squared at the denominator, so later this one will become the 0. So basically, over here, um, this one is important because this one gives me uh, 1 over 6. This 2 is not important. So therefore, at the next term over here, I will not write all the term here because I just want you to get the idea. So over here, you can see for, for this nc2, I actually get something like 1 over 2 factorial. And then for nc3, here I actually get 1 over 6, which is 1 over 3 factorial. So this one is basically is 1 over 1 factorial. This one is basically is 1 over 2 factorial. This constant number is actually 1 over 3 factorial, which is 6. Alright, so if not hard to guess this one. So this one, if I simplify already, I get n cubed. So if I expand this one, definitely the first term is n cubed. And then I might plus something like bn squared plus cn plus d, alright? I don't care about another three more term here. But I know when n cubed and n cubed, I can simplify. Then I will get 1 over 4 factorial. Do you see it? So next term will be 1 over 4 factorial. And another term will just give me 0. Just like all of this term will get 0, I, will, I can just cancel it out. Alright, then the next term... After the dot dot dot, we still have a lot of term, right? So let's say nc5, I will get 1 over 5 factorial. Let's say nc6, I will get 1 over 6 factorial. Okay, so I think plus until 1 over 6 factorial should be more than enough. Alright, then right now, I will limit n go to infinity for 1 plus uh, 1 over n power of n. Okay, so right now, this is what I'm talking about. So we'll just pay attention at the constant here. So I have 1 plus 1, which is 2 plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, plus 1 over 5 factorial, plus 1 over 6 factorial, and so on. Alright, then here, I will just use the calculator to really uh, do it really, qu uh, really quick, see what number I will do. Alright, uh, what number I will get. So, right, so, so uh, and then plus 1 over 4 factorial, and then will plus 1 over 5 factorial. And then will plus until 1 over 6 factorial. I hope I can get uh, the number closest enough. If not closer enough, maybe I can uh, keep on going. Alright, so the calculator will tell me I will get 2.7181 maybe. Alright, so approximate this value. Alright, then let's check about what is the E value. If I type E1 into my calculator, my calculator will tell me the, the value I will get is 2.71828181828. Alright, I will get something like this. So you can see the number is quite close. So if you want to get the closer number, you just plus 1 over 7 factorial and so on. So definitely until now, I can say this value, I, I can very confident to say this value is super, super close to E. So therefore, prove it. Alright, this is how we prove uh, this kind of limit question. I hope you find this video helpful to you. Anyways, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.